All right, my friends, welcome back to Frog Boy X1 Gaming. I'm Andrew, and today we are going to be going over the official drivers for AMD's Fluid Motion Frames, as well as some other kind of cool stuff they snuck into this update. So if you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. This is the answer to NVIDIA's frame generation. Um, the, the biggest difference is with AMD's Fluid Motion Frames, AFMF, and HyperRX. You can actually use this on all DX11 and DX12 games. I've tested it on a lot of games and it works very well um over the next <clears throat> over the next week or so or well actually you know for a little while every time i can get one in i will be testing some of these games i will be making videos showing you the benefits of using fluid motion frames in these games so that you can decide if this is a technology or a feature that you would like to use we are at least on this channel, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start testing FSR. We're gonna start testing the fluid motion frames. We're gonna test these these things so that you can see these cards in action, what they can actually do on my on my PC. I'm running a 5900X, so I mean maybe a little bit more than what most people would have, but maybe a little bit less than you know. I mean obviously not the AM5 platform. It's not the newest, so um yeah dude this is awesome so let's go ahead and check this out this here is amd adrenaline official software um it was released on 111 2024 but obviously that's not that's not right but it's 24.1.1 and this is the official driver yes it did come out back on 111 but that was in beta form still i have been using this all through the beta like i've been using this through the whole beta um i've went from the very beginning all the way till now all the way to these drivers becoming official so that is pretty cool um so let's go ahead and check around in here so we got the smart technology thing in here this here um, wasn't there before in your regular um, in your regular drivers um so this has got the noise suppression and amd privacy view stuff like that uh the one thing that they snuck into this let's go ahead and jump over here we're going to pop into the display tab and uh, we're going to go, I believe it is, uh, where's that button at? I think it's, I think it's these ones right here, the scaling mode. No, it's not that one. I think we're, I think we're going to need to be in graphics. Okay, so we are going to be in advanced view. So advanced view, um, you're going to have your access to all of this. Um, you can reset your shader cache, but they have this new thing in here that just came into this and it is, ah, video upscale. So video upscale, upscaling video playback resolution and adjusting details for a better visual experience in DirectX 11 applications, including Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge and Media Player to enable the feature while you are while your system is running on battery power go to the playback tab in your windows settings so if this is if you're on a laptop <coughs> now is what this will do is this this will upscale like say you're watching like a 1080p video it will upscale it all the way up to 4k whatever um whatever you want to do with that um this here is a new feature i don't think i enabled mine <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't have it enabled and, and for some reason it's not it wasn't letting me enable it or whatever But yeah, this is a new thing that they put in here This is so that when when you're watching like t when you're watching movies or whatever you're watching on your on your PC This here will do your video upscale for you now. They did used to have something already in here um, Like I was showing you a minute ago like GPU scaling um, I think that's just in a regular display though. So yeah, so you got GPU scaling. Um, this here will, when enabled, it will it will scale up lower resolutions to fit the display. Um, that was already there, but I think the other one is a more advanced version of this. So you'll be able to get in there and use that. So let me go back to the home button, uh, the home page. Um, setting up HyperRx and everything. So you can just hit this little button right here, or I believe there was in uh sheesh what was it alt alt z oh no yeah alt z so you'd have like this little sidebar that you can just pull up you can you can set everything from right here um you can enable you can enable or disable hyper rx right there um but when you're in the uh 
the full-fledged um, AMD software and stuff. This is like one of those major features that I really like about the AMD, the AMD platform, like getting an AMD GPU and having access to the uh, the adrenaline software this is like night and day from the control panel for me i'm pretty new to pc i've only been doing this for a couple of years and i like i like this i i like this i like the way it looks i like the the ui for it i like how it's got different you know little um, folders in here that you can get in there um this right here keeps track of all the games you play and it will keep track of your average frame rates and stuff like alan wake 2 i'm at 109 frames um uh <clears throat> avatar frontiers of pandora we're sitting at 162 you know i mean it it just it just keeps track of things so it's cool like i, I like that i like the fact that when you get into the graphics tab uh you can go through here you can set all of these up you can play around with super resolution super resolution is awesome if you're utilizing um Gosh dang it, where is that display? So under the display tab, one of my favorite things is the virtual super resolution. I usually have that enabled on the screen that I play all the time. So virtual super resolution, this here will let you crank it up. And with with NVIDIA, you have like what DSR or whatever. I'm, I, you can upscale from 4K or you can you can downsample from 4K on that or you can use like their legacy things or whatever. You can get it up to 6K. Um, but with my 4070, it was, it was absolutely pointless to try to do 6K. <clears throat> it's not as pointless to do 6K on the 7800 XT. I mean, it kind of does it on like older games. It does it really well. But on the newer games and stuff, yeah, 6K is pushing it like pretty hardcore um, for 16 gigs of VRAM and, you know, like not having, you know, as many, uh, many processors and stuff in there, but as many cores. But when you're, when I'm on my 7900 XT, I can easily throw a lot of games in 6K, super sample them down to 1440p with the virtual super resolution. This is awesome. And then, so here's the thing though, but if you're in like 6K and you're using virtual super resolution and you kick on either, um, and, and you kick on freaking uh, FSR ultra performance, it still looks incredible. It still looks incredible. And me personally, like I'm an image quality guy, I really like image quality. So anything I can do to boost my image quality and be able to still have a playable frame rate, like I'm all for that. Um, when I do this, when I, when I use virtual super resolution, I'm shooting for 60 frames. That's what I'm shooting for. I, I I don't mind playing my open world games or or any of my single player games, stuff like that with with um at 60 frames a second. And now with AMD's fluid motion frames, when I use virtual super resolution to kick me down into like 60 frames a second or better, then I can use AMD's fluid motion frames to knock my frame rate back up and it smooths out the image and makes it even better. Like this technology, like like these tools that AMD has put out today that, that we now have access to on all 7,000 series GPUs and 6,000 series GPUs, this is incredible. Like this is incredible. It if, if you're if you're playing something like um i use it for racing games too but if you're playing something like call of duty obviously call of duty modern warfare you know 3 now has actual fsr3 with frame generation so you can use that um to tell you the truth i don't really see much of a difference between amd's fluid motion frames versus versus the the frame generation that comes with um fsr3 it pretty much works the same um it's just one of them is like you can use like afterburner or whatever to get like your your frame readout or the other one you have to use um you have to use amd's uh technology like their their uh their little um when when you get into the performance tab you go over here to the overlay um, and then you kick on like AMD's thing or whatever. That one there will show you the uh, frame gen lag. It will show you everything you need to know for when you're using that. And then you can play it. Um, my preferred way to play AMD's fluid motion frames is with a controller. Um, I find that the uh, that the mouse movement um, turns it on and off. And that's another thing on on the AM, uh, AMD's fluid motion frames. Fast camera movement will will deactivate it. <clears throat> so it potentially could so so they they deactivate it so that you don't lose image quality uh because if they kept it going then you would you, it might start to blur out or something like that but 
Overall, I think the transition is actually pretty good. Really, really smooth if you're using a controller. Um, it does, you can tell more when you're using a mouse to, to, to go ahead and move through that or whatever. But uh, if we get into um, the tuning, the tuning in the AMD's platform. So you can just get in here and you can auto do these right here. Like you can undervolt your GPU, you can auto do it, um, or you can or you can do it like manual. Like you can get in here and you can do everything manual, or you can just do it, you know, just like say, hey man, I want to overclock the GPU, you click that button. Or you want to undervolt, you click that button. Or you want to overclock your RAM, you just click that button, it'll automatically do it. It'll go through a thing. I, I would do it right now and show you, but it'll probably, it, there's a potential that it could like restart the system or... <clears throat> um black out the screens or something like that i don't i don't remember what it says Let, let's read it real quick it says uh auto ordinary vaulting is an invasive process may cause your system to crash or reboot so i'm not going to do that right now while we're recording the video um i've done it multiple i've done it a couple times i've undervolted it to see you know kind of what what it does or whatnot and it it hasn't crashed my pc yet um i find amd's um adrenaline software actually to be very responsive, very smooth. I don't find a lot of bugs. I don't find a lot of glitches. Um, every now and then you get like the driver timeout or something or, or, um, <clears throat> or like the, the like the, the UE five games. Those are the ones that I usually will have like a, like, a, like it'll crash. Like the UE five game will crash on me. And I'm like, what the freak man. Um, and that usually only happens right around launch. Maybe the first, you know, couple, couple, of couple of days or something. But usually after that first patch, that doesn't happen anymore. And it's not every single time. It's it's pretty pretty rare, actually, that that happens. So, <clears throat> gosh, I'm losing my voice already. <clears throat> this is only the first video. So, all right, my friends. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. Um, if there's any questions, if you guys want to know anything, uh, hit, hit me up in the comments section. Let me know what you guys want to see. Because this is awesome. I can't believe this is finally out. It's finally ready. And it's finally official. So, all right, guys. We'll see you in the next one.